Hello, welcome to back to another episode on the Bedrock Realm, and today we are starting somewhere a little bit different. We are starting in the jungle, and you're probably wondering why we're in a jungle biome. We ha we don't have a jungle near our house. Where? Why are we here? What are we doing? And we are digging a really big hole. <laughs> That's all we are doing at the moment is digging a really big hole. This is going to be the start of a mega base that I'm planning to build over here. And I've revised the size of this hole probably about, I think it's three times now. And this is going to be the final, final revision of it. Um, this is going to be dug all the way down to bedrock. And then I've got plans for other things to go in and around here. Yeah, that looks way better. So I've only just dug out the final revision. And I think that looks way better than what it did before. That was the old hole. This is the new hole. I think that's perfect for us. Um, I'm not entirely sure how, what we're going to build here yet, or how we're going to build it, but I've got a couple of ideas in mind. They might change over time, so we're going to see as we go. As we get further into the build, uh, we'll see what happens, what changes, and yeah. But my plan is to build mega structure here, and I want to do sort of, the theme I'm going for is like an Aztec sort of ruins. Um, I think it's going to work out quite well, but we're going to dig this massive big hole all the way down and then we're going to have our mines at the bottom of it and maybe some other bits in between. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not even sure we're going to have the mines at the bottom, to be honest, but we are going to dig all the way down to bedrock and then take it from there, really. But this is going to be a mega project that I come back and I work on it intermittently. So I'll come and do a bit one night and just dig out a load and then one day I'll come back and I'll build something maybe or get like an outline of something done. But I'm not going to be here all the time doing loads of stuff and just continually, continuously going for it. Uh, we're just going to come back and forth over, over the course of this realm. But anyway, let's head on back towards the house if I can remember where my nether portal is. Right, so continuing on with today's episode, I said in my last one that I was going to do some resource gathering, and I have done. I have AFK. I AFK'd here overnight. As you can see, I am on 27 levels. I did die trying to stock up on something, and I lost everything. I had to start again. I'm now on Satin Girl 4.0, I believe. I think 5.0 is in the box. Yeah. So I lost Satin Girl 3.0. Uh, we're now down to Satin Girl 4.0. That's the third one I've lost this series. Um, but yeah, I did a load of AFK in here the other day. This is all full to the brim, so I need to start emptying this out again. This is from one overnight session, and I think they were despawning, so I think we might need to alter the storage system slightly, which leads to how I died, really. Um, but I'm thinking about putting a shulker box loader off of this, one that we can turn on and off. So if we're going to do a long AFK sesh, we can switch it on, go up, and then it'll be shulker box loaded, and then we'll have loads more storage that way. And it's going to be way easier as well taking it up to trade with the villagers if we have them preloaded. Um, gold, I did a load of gold. We're now already back up to two second double chest, halfway full. And I've already converted all these into gold ingots. You can see there we've got all of that. And we've also got all of that and almost almost on the third box there. So we're actually filling this up pretty quickly. And on top of that, not only did I make some gold bars, I made some gold blocks. And we almost have a whole row of those. So we might actually fill up a double chest at some point if we get a shulker box system in here. Because this is all full as well, as well as this. So I think we might need to do it for both. And then we can just have one switch where we go, cool, we're going to AFK and it switches all the shulker loaders on. But we don't want to be shulker loading unnecessarily. So yeah, we've gathered a load of resources there. We now have enough gold to make as many beacon bases as we want everywhere. Um, so that's pretty cool. We can just move the beacon about and not have to keep rebuilding the beacon, which is quite nice. Um, resource gathering wise, I got, I think it was 15. 15 boxes of gravel. And we also got 16 boxes of sand plus all that we have here. So that is going to do us. This is all full shulker boxes of sand, by the way. I spent a good five, six hours just gathering all these resources. Uh, what else did I gather? Did the gold. 
Uh, I went and stocked up on all of our dyes so we can make all the concrete we ever need to. So things are coming along. Things are getting good. Uh, so today, what I said we were going to do was go and look at the villager breeder. And start looking at a way to get them to the swamp and get them to and from. Uh, for that, we are going to need track. A lot of track at that. And for that, we're going to need gold and sticks and redstone. If we come over here, I do actually have an absolute ton of sticks here. We take two stacks of sticks. We can get two stacks of redstone, and then we can fly over and we can make as many gold rails as we want. Also, also to note that this thing is also a redstone and emerald farm. Not only is it a gold farm and a rotten flesh farm, it is an emerald farm, and it is a redstone farm. And I'm going to show you why. Every 32 rotten flesh, we can take some of this out. So each one of these guys, once we have 30 in, bear in mind they're going to give us three emeralds for three stacks of rotten flesh. And if you think of how much rotten flesh we've got, and once we have 30 villagers in here, 30 times 3 is going to be 90 diamonds every every time they do a reset. So once they wake up, they'll reset. Once they go to sleep, they'll reset. Oh, sorry, six. So we get six emeralds. So that'd be 180 if we had 30 of them. Which is pretty cool, but yeah, we basically just keep doing this. And there you go, we're at 30 emeralds, and then say you want to come over here and you want to trade this guy for redstone. There's 20 redstone. There's 40 redstone. There's 60 redstone, and it just costs us 3 emeralds for a stack of redstone. It's nuts. It's so, so good, and all this rotten flesh is going to get used. I might put more up here. I might do 40, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how we go, but I think I want to put more up here. So yeah, today I want to get some of the track built in the nether. And this is to get the villagers to and from the the swamp biome that we have. The one that we've got set aside. But yeah, so I unfortunately died in the end as well. Uh, so I was out hunting and I wasn't paying attention at one point and then I fell into the void and I lost everything. But yeah, I had almost up to 300 levels at one point. And then, yeah, I just wasn't paying attention in the end and unfortunately died. So I had to restart again, go get all my levels back. But I got all my gear back. It took me a good few levels and it took me about an hour or two to get it all back, which is a pain in the butt, but at least it wasn't irreplaceable. I'm thinking because at least the swamp, we should probably use some green and some purple down here. Oop, let's quickly jump that. I don't know what to use on the run up to it though, because I kind of want to do biome themed based on what direction it's going. And I don't know whether to keep everything on one ice path and then just have turnings or have multiple ice paths going to multiple places. So instead of just having this one here to go towards the Mesa, do I do another path here that comes exclusively to the Swamp thing? So you can always, you don't miss the turn and you always get on the right track. I don't think I should build another ice road. Or should I? Okay, so I've decided on doing another ice path just because it's not really that much of a difference. They're quite next to each other. I think it looked much cooler having an entrance to a tunnel that's themed into the biome that we go into. So I think that's going to make things a lot easier for everyone. Right, so the tunnel is all dug out. I've made it fairly wide. I've not done the full width of the tunnel like we've done over here. I think we're just going to get the ice in today and then put the rails in because that's the main... This is the main tunnel we need the rails on to move the villages back and forth. As you can see, I've started a little bit on this one, just getting a little bit of it laid in. So I've just got some prismarine going on the bottom here. And we're going to run that all the way down. Or I have run that all the way down. And then on top of here, we're going to put rail all the way. So if we need to move any entities, we can. Nothing's going to spawn on top of here because of the glass panes. Uh, we can ride the boats down the middle still. And then I've got a nice design to go around that to also stop moles from spawning on it. So hopefully, fingers crossed. Let's quickly get this ice track here in. And then we can get the sides in. I've decided to go with dark green concrete for this one. And then we're going to use purple for the glass on the side of this one. Yeah, if I design it from the get-go, it's going to be easier than trying to rip it all out and then redesign it at a later date. And like I said, we need the rails, so we might as well get it all done and started straight away. So we've got the rails in, we've got the ice in, we've got the blocks underneath in. So that at least starts the design off. 
Uh, we're going to use purple stained glass as well. And I've ha been thinking while I've been building this like, about how we could theme this. So in the tunnel, we'll kind of do like trees going up the side and have like creeping trees and make like a tunnel of leaves and stuff like that. Brown and green are the two main colors I can think of when I think of swamps. And I can't put water or lily pads or any of that good stuff in there. So maybe mix a bit of slime in. If we can get the slime farm up and running. We can get a couple of slime blocks in there maybe i don't know we'll have to have a think about it and have a tinker in a creative world but that's where my mind's going at the moment if you guys have any other ideas please let me know uh today is just the functionality of it and then we can get started on the villager breeder over here wicked so that is the tunnel all done i do kind of want to go down and clean this up a little tiny bit on the side i don't like where glass panes connect to walls it really 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 annoys me Especially when you're trying to do clean builds like this. I think I might quickly just run down here, trim all this back. Yeah, that's looking way better. Way better. And also, at the end here, I'm not sure what we're going to do yet. Obviously, everything's not going to run straight up into the portal. Uh, we are going to have a villager breeder portal. So there is going to be a separate one around here somewhere. I'm not sure what side it's going on yet. Depends where we make the breeder. Wonderful. And then we got all the track in place. The only thing left to do now is power this. Wonderful. That works perfectly. So I'm going to go watch a couple of videos. Figure out how the breeding mechanics work. And then I am going to gather some materials. And then head to the swamp. And then hopefully we can start getting this thing built today. At least get the portal in and get some some sort of form of where we're going to be going with this thing okay so work yourselves back i have gone off and i've watched a couple of videos and i've done a little bit of research here so the plan is i need apparently clean fresh blank villages that have no trades no profession no nothing nothing in their inventories so i have been breeding up the guys that are over here and when they're babies i've been pushing them into the nether portal and I have a little chamber on there, the other side, which I'll show you in a bit. If he'll go in. If not, I need to use my boat. Yeah, you, I gave you the choice the easy way. Okay, so yeah, I'm breeding up the guys down here. And then we are sending them into the nether, which means they're all clean and free. They've got nothing in their inventory. They've not had a profession. They're not linked to... They probably are linked to a bed, but I think they de-link once they're in the nether for a little bit. Jesus, he just died from my thorns. Um... Right, I'm going to need a couple more boats if that's how this is going to go. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think we need about a total of eight of them. I've already done two. Obviously, I tried this before I started recording just to see what was going on and how all this system was going to work. And I put a couple bits in place uh, as soon as I figured out it did work. No, no, no. You stay. You stay. Let's see if we can get another one here. Then we'll get at least two or three over to that. Actually, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go fill up the chamber on the other side of the nether. With these guys. Come on. Off you go. Into the nether. If you can do this without a boat, I'll forever love you. That's it. He's walking in that direction. Watch him change direction as soon as we get to the portal, though. Ah, no, he won it. Fantastic. Right, so now we get another one. As soon as we move these out, I think it clears the bed space. I don't know if it does it fast enough, though. Right, we'll figure it out. Uh, so we're going to do the breeder over in the swamp. I've already had a look at a tutorial for it. And I think we're just going to follow a tutorial for it. And we are going to design it and make it look pretty good, hopefully. All right, come with me. Almost there. you got friends on the other side of this portal. There you go. Oh, so have you. So have you, mate. Look, come this way. Watch. Come. Come, come. Please. Go in the boat. You know what, I'm going to come back to you. I'm going to hope he walks into the boat. This guy here is walking towards the portal, so we should take full advantage of it. In you go. No. Right, he's in the boat. He's in the boat. That's the last two we need, I think. So I have the mechanism in place to put these guys in the nether, let them grow up, and then we also have a system. He can stay here. That little baby one can stay here. Oh, should we take an extra one just in case? Yeah, we'll take an extra one just in case. Because I feel like I'm probably going to kill one of these. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> yeah, have some potatoes. Make another one. 
Uh oh, please don't walk in. If I do that like that, then only the babies can walk in there. That's if they make any more babies. I don't know if I gave them enough to do that. Right, wicked. So that is that done. Let's head on over to the nether side and I'll show you what I've worked on. This is actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. So one, two, three. I did leave a bit of a drop in here. And I noticed that now. <laughs> they will eventually walk off the edge down here. I should have put less of a drop in there. I feel like these are going to die at some point. So basically they grow up. I put a minecart here. Collect them from the corner. There you go. There goes one. There goes two. Three. Oh. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh yeah, we did put the extra one in there. Completely forgot about that. But yes, so they will grow up in here eventually. And then I put the minecart down there. And then they will start going. I give it a little nudge. It's my AFK spot so they can grow up. And then they come down here, and then they get onto this track, and then I literally just get on the ice boat like this, and I follow them down, and then I've got two villagers in here at the moment, still in their minecarts on a track, and the next thing we need to do is go through and figure out where we want to put, where we want to put the breeder. So I'm going to go grab the materials we need, and then we can figure that out, and then build the portal and start getting those guys transferred over to the swamp, hopefully. Right, so let's go through here and we're going to see if we can figure out where we want to put these guys. So here is our portal. Of course, it's bloody night time. Um, I don't have any arrows on me either. I wonder if I have any in my weapon chest. Or well, that one there will do. What are the chances of that? That arrow right there will do me lovely. Thank you very much. Perks of having infinity. I tell you what, one thing I do love about the swamp is this grass. We need to set up a little area, so let's get ourselves set up. All right, so that's us all set up. I tell you what, I notice as well, the grass gets like really brown in the middle here, and then like really super green over here, which is a shame because I'd actually quite like to be here. I tell you what, let's move it. And I've just set up base, but let's move it here. Let's put the villager farm right here. So I absolutely love this green grass here and I want to be above it, not above the brown grass here. But this, this here, right here, if we terraform this out a little bit, it's going to look amazing. So I'm thinking if we go in at this level here, oh yeah, we get that nice green. That's exactly what we want. But we'll make something look really nice here, something that fits in with the swamp. I don't, want, I don't like building just big ugly farms that are convenient and they just work. I... I I like building farms at work, but I also want to make them look nice. I could have quite easily done this near home and just minecart them over and we probably would have been built by now. But nope, I decided <laughs> that I would much rather go through all the extra pain and effort. And I tell you what, it's a learning experience for me because I've not had to bring villagers through another portal before. So this is a completely new experience for me as well. And I've never actually built in the swamp before. So this is two new experiences for me. So I get to do a build in the swamp. So wherever we build the portal for them to come through, we need to rebuild the portal in the exact same X and Y, X and Z coordinate. But we can move it in a different... Uh, but for the time being, we need to get our villagers up to here. So if we build it here, once we got the farm set up, or the breeder set up, sorry. Oh, place. And we need to start collecting them and sending the new guys back to the nether. So once we get them, we send them back into the nether. Then we send them back home or to wherever we need them. So yeah, this is going to come in handy for a lot of things. A lot, a lot of things. So if we mark that there, let's just quickly get the coordinates for all of this sorted. So if we've got, let me, I got, right, let me shoot off. Let me do some maths. I get the coordinates difference between that portal and this portal and then i'll try and build one in the nether and see if they link up properly all right so that should be where the new portal is so it should have been i think it's about 40 blocks difference on the x and the z's which means it's five blocks difference in here so i've gone from this corner i've got one two three four five and then out from this one one two three four Five, six. Okay, never mind. <laughs> an extra one by the looks of it. Oh, wait, no, you don't count this block here. So you go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, 
No, that's right. So that should link up. I need to go light the other one. I don't want to light the other one until I have that one in. So if we light this one, let's cross our fingers together. Let's go in, let's see what happens. Hell to the yeah. And let's just make sure it works both ways so that when we go back, yes, 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 yes. Right, that all links together. That is perfect. That is exactly what we want. So next thing we need to figure out is unloading system unloading system for the villagers from the minecarts and then how we unload them out of there and then push them through the portal once they're in here we then we need to figure out where they need to go from here so i think the first thing we probably need to do is build a glass box around this portal because we know this is the portal that they're coming in from i'm not entirely sure how i'm doing any of this by the way i've no tutorials or nothing for this so far there is a tutorial for the farm uh, for the breeder, sorry, but everything else up until this point, I'm kind of just winging it and seeing what happens. It's going all right so far, so I don't think I'm doing terribly. I haven't killed any villagers yet. Wait, have I? No. Have I? No, I haven't killed any villagers yet. <laughs> I had to really think about that. There we go. That'll do it. That'll do it. It doesn't like being bounced on a redstone block, apparently. There we go. So that is that. Any uh, minecarts that now come through should fall in there. I'm kind of planning ahead because I lost so many boats getting them over here. Uh, but if I can get them in there and then we can... Yeah, that'd be alright. And then we can dig that up to there. And then I'll have a minecart there and then we'll pull them out this way or something. I have no idea. Figure that out. But if I can automatically get it so once they fall through the minecart drops down... Minecart gets loaded in here, pulls them straight out and puts them into the system. That would be really, really cool. Uh, but for the time being, let's see if we can just get one of these guys in here. Right. Okay, okay, okay. I think we're looking pretty good. I think I've got something set up over here in the nether. So we'll quickly pop in and have a look. And we're going to see if this works together. Uh, something I've just come up with. So it might work. It might not work. But this is all the fun of Minecraft, is exploring and seeing what does and doesn't work. And we're going to find out together. Because I've not tested this yet. As you can see, I've not even linked it up. So all I've done is I've put a detector rail here, and a normal rail there. And then we have a redstone dust, two observers, fire two pistons, sticky pistons at the glass. And hopefully, once the minecart's here, just push the villager in. We're either going to kill him or send him to the swamp. So we'll find out. If not, I have alternative methods. I did bring cactus and sand, so we can try and break the minecarts that way or something. We'll find out, though. Let's make sure he is all safe and secure. I mean, I say that. He is going to be the test guinea pig for this thing. There we go. There goes one. Uh, it's not working. Okay. I thought that would just break them and push them in. Obviously not. i tell you what. It's not orthodox, but he may have accidentally slipped in there while I was doing this, so... Ta da Bye. Right, hopefully we call that my car on the other side. Um, right, so I'm doing a quick revision here. Nothing too bad at the minute. Right, so I'm not going to lie to you. The first test didn't go very well. But yours is going to go better. At least he lived. At least he's alive, I think. I don't know. I haven't checked the other side yet. But you can go check him. Oh. Okay, so it pushes him in. But it doesn't break the minecart. Okay, so that's something we need to sort out. How am I going to do this? We put a hopper. Oh, no. Because if the... God. Brrr, brrr. Yeah, maybe. We'll find out. We'll find out. We're going to have to bring another one over here. So you can actually see the thing in action, which is pretty cool. Uh, let's just break this guy's minecart. He's gone. He's gone. He's all good. Um, we'll go check those guys in a minute. But let's quickly go and get ourselves one more... Right, slight issue. They haven't quite grown up yet. Um, let's have a look. No, that looks pretty good to me. So just give him a little nudge. And off he goes. And we can just follow on behind him here. Catching him up. Oh, this flying trick's actually faster than the minecart. Digging a three high tunnel and doing the elytra flying trick is faster than using the minecart. I did not know that. So this is looking a bit janky at the moment. I just want to see if it works. Once it works, I make all this look pretty, I promise. Just got to wait for you to grow up. And then we push you into here. 
Your test subject number three. The first two lived, I think. Let's go check those. See what your fate's going to be. Oh, it's looking promising. I see a villager. He's not dead. Okay, cool. If I take these corners out, that allows me to collect things from the portal here. Uh, we have two villagers. They're down in the water here and... Yes, yeah, going well. That's looking good to me. I'm happy with that. But yes, yeah, so there's those two are in there. We just need another ooh, six more of those, and then we can start building the breather. Uh, just I want to play with this so I know how to do it. So when we come to making a iron farm and making the library, um, I'm also thinking about zombie curing station. That's one thing we need to take into consideration. Because that is coming in the parity update. We are getting discounts for our cured zombie villagers. So that is one thing we need to have a look at. Is setting up that sort of system as well. And getting ahead. So one, once 1 1.16 comes we can just go straight with it. I don't know if we're going to have to get new villagers. If we do that's the good thing we have the breeder for. Right so I'm going to watch this guy grow up. And then we're going to see if this one works. Okay, so I am back. I did a little bit of digging, a little bit of research, and I found out that the simplest, it was the, literally the simplest thing. I'm going to show you when we get over there, but I do want to take a villager from here and show you the whole process from start to finish and how all of this is working because it works really, really well now, and it's really easy, which means I should be able to set these up quite easily everywhere else that we're going to need them. Uh, I'm just going to quickly encourage... I'm just going to encourage one of these guys to get the minecart. There you go. Wonderful. So all we do is we give this one a nudge. I'm going to set up a better system when we build this in the future to launch these on and off. Uh, we send him up there and he goes away. And then we're going to get a little bit ahead of this guy just so we can kind of give you an idea. So he comes along the cart like this. We have to keep near him. Because otherwise the chunks are unloaded and then he doesn't actually move anywhere. He just stops until the chunks are loaded. So unfortunately we have to follow them down. Um, but once we get to the bottom here. If I scoot on ahead. Uh, it was as simple as using an activator rail. Literally as soon as he goes over the activator rail it knocks him out and puts him straight into the portal it was as easy as that i was over complicating this way too much uh, but it's all good it's all working i'm happy so i went ahead a little bit as well and i had a pre-look at the entire build for this thing and there's one thing that i didn't account for that i haven't collected yet and that is uh seeds i made a little bit of progress over here as well uh, but these guys are literally simply getting pushed in here now. And then they're falling down here. I believe there's a zombie pigment in there with them. Or well, there was at one point. So yeah, as I was saying, I've done a little bit of work over here. I figured out where we need the portal. And I didn't realize that it needed to be chunk aligned. Um, luckily, we were super close to it. So we don't have to move the portal in the nether. Everything is linked up the way it should be. And everything is good. So all we need to do is get all of our villagers over into this spot here. Um, and once we have them in this spot, we can get rid of this portal. And then we're going to light this portal. And then this is going to be the floor that pushes all the baby villagers into here. And then we're going to have a holding chamber exactly where we're putting them in now. And then we'll take them out the way we've been taking them out from back at home. And then moving them to where we need to move them. And now we've figured out the unloading system. So this is all going to get super, super simple soon. Um, but yes, I need seeds for these guys. So apparently these guys have eight inventory slots. I'm guessing it's similar to what we have. We have nine on the hotbar. Um, but then they always have one reserve. So when you're holding something that they can trade with you, uh, it will pop up in their hands. I'm guessing that's why they've only got eight. But in order to not waste potatoes and food and other stuff like that, uh, it's recommended that you fill their inventory their hot bar with seeds so you need six stacks of seeds plus one and then that will fill all the other seven slots and then that leaves just one slot full of potatoes so they're not stealing all the potatoes um, it just makes it a little bit more efficient it wouldn't be too bad once it was all filled in but it's just getting it filled in and i think seeds are easier to get than potatoes so i am currently working on farming those 
and we need to do that before we can start putting these guys into the villager system so i think between now and the next episode unfortunately i don't think we'll be able to get these guys sorted and get this finished this episode so i think in the next couple of days i'm going to try and farm out the wheat seeds and try and get as many as i can i'm hoping i can get enough to do two cells i currently have enough to do one i'd like enough to do both sides once we're in that position um I think we're going to be pretty good. We can start breeding things up here and then maybe move the other guys around to where we need them. Um, but yeah, no, it's coming along really well. The, I haven't actually killed any villagers yet moving them, believe it or not. So I'm pretty proud of that. Um, but yeah, no, we're getting there. We've got a little bit of work to do here. A little bit of work gathering-wise to finish these guys here off. And then once all that is said and done... Then we can get started on this and then we can start the villager breeder even if we've only got two cells at least we can get it started and yeah really really cool so thank you guys very much for watching and hopefully we can get this all finished by next episode depends how much i do off camera between now and then but thank you guys very much for watching i hope you guys have yourselves a very wonderful day and i shall see your beautiful faces in the next video goodbye